Welcome to the Eden Church, where we endeavor to lift Christ, seek the salvation of the unsaved, foster unity of faith, and promote a more excellent way of living. We thank each of you for worshiping with us today. Good morning and welcome on this 4th of July, 4th of July, first Sunday in July 2021. Welcome to this, another virtual opportunity for worship. I'm excited and thankful for those of you who are connected to us. Thank you for staying connected. I appreciate that. Let me admonish us to continue to pray for all those persons who are sick, shut in, bereaved, those persons who are waiting to be healed and delivered. We continue to extend our prayers to the family of Wanda Wright, a faithful and devoted, faithful and devoted member of our ministry. We thank God for her as we celebrated her life, a uh, graveside service on this past Thursday. Special thanks is extended to each and every member that reached out to this family. Thank you so very kindly for always doing what you do to make us the E. The E stands for excellence. Thank you for reaching out and comforting and supporting this family. Prayers and condolences are also extended to Mother Geraldine McGrew and also Sonia Pratt and uh, also her daughter Felicia. We're, we're praying for the entire family family during the transition of uh, Mother McGrew's 97 years young. Uh, her aunt transitioned and then later on and within a day or so her niece transitioned as well. A celebration of life graveside service for uh, Miss Barbara Whitehead uh, will be uh, on this coming Thursday, July the 8th, July the 8th at 10 a.m. Forest Lawn Memorial Gardens. And we will have an opportunity to view and to share with this family as well at the historic North Campus on Wednesday from five until uh, about seven. So we're asking you to support Mother McGrew as she has experienced uh, the transition of two loved ones in just one week. And then we're making sure that we're supporting her as we always do. Prayers and condolences are extended to Richard and Diana Seymour in the unexpected passing of their 20-year-old son, Malik. His plans for his service and celebration is pending, but we are praying for all of our youth, but many of them were connected to him and know him very well, and we are praying for the Seymour family, and we are here for anything that we possibly can do to assist you during this really, this tragic time. We are praying for you. Prayers are also requested for Deacon, uh, our Deacon Emeritus, the chairman of our Deacon's Ministry Emeritus, John Tyrus, who was in the hospital this week. And we're praying also for Mother uh, Tyrus, Miss Brenda Tyrus. We're praying for you as well as you seek to aid and assist your husband during this illness and this sickness. Uh, we are praying for him. We know he's been up and down, but we are praying that God will continue to give him healing. We are praying for him. Blessed 4th of July again to you this week. I pray that each of you would be safe and that you would be sound, celebrate in a safe environment. We honor and salute all those persons who have sacrificed and served in the United States Armed Forces uh, to provide us with the independence and the freedom that we so richly enjoy. Let me give a special thanks and extend a special thanks to First Lady Pollard, Miss Ruthetta Lake, uh, Deacon Kimball, uh, Deacon Davis, and also Deacon Pettway and Deacon in Training Derek Douglas for their continued dedication to the service as we are the host church this past week for Fulton County Sheriff's Office and an event for the city of South Fulton last week. And let me just reassure you of the fact that when persons come into the building, there is a reservation list. Also, not only is there a reservation list, those persons with Fulton County, or those persons with Fulton County are persons and individuals who have been vaccinated and they have their vaccination card present when they enter the premises. And so we are thankful for their commitment to ensure that all persons are vaccinated. I'm praying that you are vaccinated as well. In this season, we really need you to think about that and go ahead and get vaccinated where we can get back to a place of normalcy. If you do your research, look on the news, you will see 96% 
of those individuals who are in the hospital now with this new strain and this new variant are persons who have yet to be vaccinated. Let me remind you of that. Let me also say on the third Sunday in this month, that Sunday after next, third Sunday, we will celebrate 149 years of ministry. The Enon Church has been on the vanguard in the community doing what we do best and that's worship God and also extend ourselves. We endeavor to lift Christ, seek the salvation of the unsaved, foster unity of faith and promote a more excellent way of living. Let me just say to you, we will highlight the history of our ministry from 1872 all the way to 2021 and salute all of our ancestors who made it possible for us today. I am asking everyone to make a sacrificial gift to the ministry, $149, $1 for every year that this ministry has been in existence. That's not so hard. I pray you would do that. And maybe if you are a business owner, I challenge you to sow a seed into the ministry and watch God do some miraculous things in your business adventures. And so save the date also on August the 15th. August the 15th, we will celebrate our annual homecoming and family reunion to on the grounds here in the ministry. And so we will have a, we are asking you to bring your tents and the food that so that you may dine together and on the grounds, here on the grounds. And we're going to push that to about 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock. So we'll be close to the noon hour, close to the noon hour in order that we might have an opportunity for virtual worship, then come on the grounds and do what we do best, and that is fellowship and worship God. Amen. This is the last week to participate in the return to church survey, the return to church survey. If you haven't done so already, text the keyword survey to the number 54. 244. Text the keyword survey to the number 54244. You can access the survey from our website as well. And so before we start worship, please make plans to go ahead and get your communion in place so that we can have communion together virtually as we've done for the last 16 months or so. I'm asking you go ahead, prepare your communion kits with your family so that we can commune together virtually. If you are in need of prayer, if you're in need of assistance, if you're in need of knowing the plan of salvation for your life, or if you'd like to join the ministry, you can text Join Enon to the number 54244. You can text prayer. You can text Enon prayer. You can text Enon salvation. All of those dynamics to the number 54244. One word, Enon prayer, Enon salvation, or join Enon. Let me thank you for staying connected again. And if you are a person who is a tither, let me tell you thank you for your commitment to the ministry. You know, a lot of times people will tell you how much they care about the church. And most certainly we'll see how much you care as a result of what you commit to give because it's really not something that God needs from us. It's a test for us so that God can release the blessings that he has in store. And a lot of us have our blessings locked in, locked in a place. God cannot release us the way he desires because we are not committed to the promises. We really want to accept the promises, but may, let me just reassure you, in order to get the promises, you got to practice the principle. Make sure you pay your tithe and offering. Tithe is the debt we owe, and our offering is the seed we sow. Tithe and offering, Brothers Keepers offering, scholarship ministry, pastors love offering, any of those dynamics through the process of Enon MG, 54244-3550, Enon Road, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349, or onto the website. Go down to the online giving portion and share your gift that way. And let me just tell you, we are excited. This is the first Sunday, and it is the 4th of July. Uh, the 4th of July, first Sunday, and uh, I'm thankful for the connectivity, and I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm ready. I am ready. Now do me a favor. Put your hands together. Give God the praise he deserves, and let's... Come on. Come on, Tony McCullough. Come on, Athens. Come on, Chicago. 
Come on, California, Pennsylvania, Eden Road, Southwest Atlanta. Let's go to worship.
gracious God, our Father, we're thankful to you. God, we're thankful for the manifold blessings that you continue to extol and give us. We honor you, O oh God. We pray now that you bless this word, make it a rhema word, a word that's tailor-made, exclusive design with us in mind. I pray, God, that your people, as a result of the preached gospel, will know that they have everything they need through the total sufficiency. Lord, have mercy of your son, Jesus Christ. God, blot out our sins and our transgression. Give us strength and power to articulate your word. Bless us. We'll bless you back by telling the world what a great God you are, that where we are, you brought us. What we know, you taught us. What we have, you gave us. And what we are, you are making us even the better. God, we pray now that you don't hold our sins against us, that we might hear clearly what the Spirit of the Lord would have to say. God, we ask that you open our hearts and our minds. Give us preaching power like only you can. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you now and we say amen. Hallelujah. We give God thanks for today yet again. And I want you to get your Bibles. Go with me. Uh, I'm reading from the New International Version of the Hebrew context of the Bible, 2 Timothy chapter number 3. And we'll commence our reading at verse number 11. And we will conclude at verse number 12. Again, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse, verses 11 and 12. And listen to these words. It says, persecution, suffering. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystria? And the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord, well, look, look at what he says, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Look at verse number 12. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ, Jesus will be persecuted. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ, Jesus will be persecuted. The Lord and I want to tag this text for just a few moments. I want to talk about uh, it comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. It was my pursuit and really to try to preach and teach to you, uh, commence a series of teaching and preaching. But being that this is the 4th of July and that we are in a place uh, where we can reflect upon all of the issues and the vicissitudes of life that we've encountered over the last 16 months, uh, more uh, particularly, uh, I wanted to come to you in this lane and we'll get to that other point at some point. But I want you to understand it comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. Ladies and gentlemen, as I attempt to navigate through the course of curriculum that is sure to chase and challenge each and every Christian throughout this sojourn, throughout this life, I thought today that it was needful to share uh, the findings of some fascinating facts that, as it relates to not just the book of Timothy, but the nature of the name Timothy, this young, energetic apostle. Timothy is an English name that derives from the Greek, from the Greek Timotheos, and when grammatically dissected, Timor, Timaea, which really means honoring or to honor Theos, 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 a Theos meaning God, which is translated the one who honors God. And he's found under the tutelage of a seasoned apostle Paul, as noted by not one but two Paulian epistles, uh, First and Second Timothy. It, it is in fact in this particular second letter that we are exposed to the tumultuous travesties that persistent persecutions of Paul as he courageously cries out for the cause of Christ in a society that perils our age. It is really symbolic supplication in the current climate and context of where we are in our community. We, live, we too live in a world where violence of men causes senseless death and innocent and uh, persecution to the helpless, uh, a world that is bathed in corruption and the cruel intentions toward the disenfranchised, a world that is, has opened its arms, really, if you will, to the ills of men and have welcomed 
the social maltreatment of the underprivileged, a world where we often have less than more, a world where we are bowing before the governments of men and have disregarded the kingdom of God. The kingdom, thy kingdom come is no longer thy will be done. So our egos, uh, arrogance, have swelled to epidemic proportions with our self-centeredness and a first me, I, myself approach of life have we consistently disjointed ourselves from a community and a covenant-based practice. And the travesty, ladies and gentlemen, is that we have uh, on many levels become as really pirates or uh, parasites, if you will, raiding and ravishing the dreams and opportunities of our youth while simultaneously extracting the hope and drive of those that attempt to embark upon and embrace a destiny of greatness, growth, and goodness. It is not far in conversation to many of us, those of us who have toiled and travailed in the efforts of level of playing field to really level the playing field of life. It is not uncommon to hear the myriad of fights that we, were, we fought for freedom and that, that has never really been free at all because, and I thought to share this on this Independence Day because freedom really is not real freedom until you free your mind from the mentality that really seeks to restrain us from being really good citizens in a good land. The question is often bearing about is when will the workers of iniquity take a furlough? When will they move and excommunicate themselves from us? When will the ambassadors of social, economic, and political abuse pale the forces of justice, fairness, and human decency? When will the ills of the city, this nation, even the world, take a back seat to a reformation that is a precursor to generations, to those who are seeking to overcome poverty, imprisonment, and multitude of disparities that we face on a day-to-day -day basis? When will we become subdued with the shame for the insensitive and insidious behavior we so blatantly display against even each other? If I may parenthetically, ladies and gentlemen, slingshot in retrospect to the aforementioned nature of the name of this particular young man, this energetic apostle of which Paul so tenaciously teaches, you do remember that his name meant to honor God. I want to point that out to you because as lofty as it sounds, it's, it is ironic that my mother really and those persons who of days of old would tell us about Timothy and tag the name of those persons that we know. Uh, matter of fact, our minister of music, his name is Timothy. Timothy, Timothy else. It really, and if there is a merit to this meaning, and if he ex is expected to honor God based upon his name, if we read the word of God, we often find Timothy paralyzed by the perils of just trying to live righteously, not to mention the persecution that came with preaching and pastoring people. And he is not alone because the promiscuity of attempting to sail to more calmer waters is even beckoning many of us to breach the destiny of our Savior. And I don't know about you, but, but for my flesh is always talking to me. And I must admit, as I seek to try to do the will of God, the flesh is always speaking louder sometimes than the spirit. And I found it quite difficult, to say the least, commonly having to battle against the Ahabs and Jezebels and the Judases of this world. And still expected in the midst of all of the discontentment and dissatisfaction in our culture to somehow seek in the process of all of the ills that's going on, just like they were going on in Timothy and Paul's day, still somehow I'm expected as preacher and pastor to somehow honor God. 
and willing on the inside and wailing on the outside and while I'm balancing faith and failure all at the same time. Often living with more questions than answers. Surviving with more month than money. Yet still I'm expected to honor God. Believing for a miracle and looking for mercy while trying to manage madness. But still I'm expected to honor God. Living in the sinful, shameless, and segregated world, I've come to understand, and here it is, ladies and gentlemen, it comes with the territory. Every ill comes with the territory. Every problem comes with the territory. Had I known that being a king's kid would put me in harm's way, had I known that being a soldier of the cross would cause me to be criticized, crippled, and crushed, had I known that working for the master would leave me feeling wounded, weary, and wondering why he's expecting me to worship, had I known, had I had a choice in the matter, the text that I have collected for our con conversation and concentration gives a credence that fairness, watch this, and righteousness and honesty and notability and humanity, humility and goodness and equality is sure to be challenged. Have you ever decided to do the right thing and the wrong thing keeps showing up at your door? So within this second book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, I was drawn with concern of the Apostle Paul and his encounters with the combatants of evil while all at the same time attempting to complete the work of the kingdom. Isn't it ironic that the believer is expected, watch this, to work in king's vineyard? and war against scores of vices all simultaneously. Paul's persecution ran the gamut from stoning to rejection. This is really somewhat the yin and the yang, if you will, of affliction. The stoning represented being a target of abuse for his actions, while rejection represented the disregard for the message of Christ that he sought to minister. Affliction in the body and afflicted in the spirit. Paul was in a state of vulnerability, unable, ladies and gentlemen, to press the pause button on his persecution. He was rejected, he was ridiculed and reprimanded. They didn't like him or what he stood for. They hated him because he, he wanted to live holy. Ridiculed because... He wanted to live righteous, criticized because he chose Christ. Persecuted for his commitment to the cause and the call and the work of the kingdom. Persecuted because he shook up the status quo from one place to the next. Persecuted for being stellar in his service to the Savior. He suffered many afflictions twice, beaten with rods, once stoned, left for dead twice, suffered shipwreck, a night and a day in the deep, persecuted. But it all came, ladies and gentlemen, with the territory. Paul says, what persecutions I endured. I am pressed to remind you that no matter how many times you prayed, ladies and gentlemen, no matter how many times you practice righteous behavior, no matter how many frequent times you fervently fasted and prayed, persecution will come. Care how good you try to be to excommunicate yourself from every dilemma you face, persecution will come. I want you to get that. And it does not mean that God has abandoned you or you've done something wrong. Here we find in the text that Paul has been doing everything right, but somehow everything wrong keeps showing up. If for Christ you live, surely trials and tribulations and tragedies will come. There's no deferent 
from the confrontations of the cross. No one told me that all of this world, to, that, that all of these issues, when I first came to Jesus, nobody told me that this was going to come with the territory. Sickness will invade your body. Persecution, sin will always Dangle at your door, persecution, Satan will try you on every hand, persecution, relationships will wilt away, and siblings will sever ties, persecution, abandoned and abused, battered and bereaved, persecution, battled by legions of lies, verbally assaulted and victimized by character assassination, persecution, when your happiness is derailed by the de deceit and your joy has been jolted by jealous persecutors. We are all vulnerable, I want you to get it, to the suffering of godly life in Jesus Christ. Vulnerable to hurt and harmful and hurtful words when all you tried to do was help. Vulnerable to looks and stares when all you tried to do was love and support. Vulnerable to backstabbing friends, conniving co-workers and critical church folk who never got delivered from their dreaded disease of sin. But yet, I come to tell you, it comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. And I ain't got long because I didn't have but two verses. I'm almost done. But before you faint from the calamities and have a crash landing of and Christianity call, let me encourage you as I prepare to leave my post on this July the 4th. Practical preaching moment not just push the eject button on God just yet because although like Paul, we are vulnerable to the persecutions of life and although the text testifies that all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution and although your heart may ache with a seemingly unbearable, unquenchable pain, there is hope on the horizon. Let me just tell you, there is hope on the horizon. There is hope on the horizon. There is hope on the horizon. Somebody just put that in the comments. Say that to yourself. There is hope on the horizon. In the middle of your hurt, in the middle of your healing, there is hope on the horizon. We too, like Paul, are preserved by the inscrutable spirit and the invincible power of Almighty God. For the text says, but out of all of them, the Lord delivered me. This is the selling point of the text. If you wasn't sold in the presentation, you ought to be sold by now. This is the selling point of the text, the climactic culminating cause that is worth celebrating because it bears repeating, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. That too comes with the territory. I'm so glad that God still delivers. That comes ladies and gentlemen, with the territory. There is invincibility in the power of God and that too comes with the territory. I mentioned 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9 to you. Surrenders that. He says, we are troubled on every side. Yet not in distress. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. In other words, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Never give up on God. His faithfulness, is and he's faithful in all of his ways. His character is flawless. His integrity is impeccable. His promises are true and his power prevails. Never give up on God. Although the divine vices of Satan may oppress you, the power of God will always be there to deliver you. Don't you give up on God because issues and problems come along with the territory. Never give up on God. Depression is terror, is temporary, but God is extraordinary. Never give up on God because the days may seem dark and dreary, but God can roll dark clouds away. Yes, he can. Never give up 
upon God through the pressure of life has you down in your head and your heart has you in a bad place but don't give up on God just remember that he is a God that delivers and I'm almost done but I wish I had time to give you a running commentary on how and who God has delivered throughout the halls of human history but I'll just leave you with this he will deliver you yes he will never give up on God because the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong but to the one that endures for the end tell somebody you can endure because all of what you're dealing with comes with the territory you may be surrounded by trouble enduring persecution battling perplexities and even cast down just remember that every setback is a setup for God to, to bring you back to give you a new way to lift you up to bring you out if you don't believe me just ask Jesus on his way to Calvary Resurrection power is right around the corner. I think you ought to get that resurrection power is right around the corner. Invincibility, it comes with the territory. God will never take you to what he cannot take you through. He will never take you to what he cannot take you through. I want you to get that. Because the question is, is there anything too hard for God? No matter what I'm going through, I shall not be destroyed. No matter how my, far my spirit falls, God will lift me above my enemies. He will safeguard my soul no matter where my life may end up or what I have to endure. He will deliver me and of this I am confident persecution and burdens of life may at times be my companion God is always my comforter there may be persecutions but there is also power to prevail and it comes <laughs> ladies and gentlemen it comes the bitter comes with the sweet comes with the territory. And although Jesus Christ endured persecution of the cross, he also experienced the power of resurrection. And it comes with the territory. With every life comes death. And with every saved soul comes resurrection. It comes with the territory. He will deliver you out of them all. And it comes with the territory he will protect he will provide and it comes with the territory he will rescue he will restore he will reinstate and it comes oh shucks with the territory i'm so glad i'm so glad that victory comes with the territory you shall reap if my brother if my sister you faint not and just know for every trial that you're going through there is a day of deliverance and it comes with the territory and what you got to realize that through it all God is going to be who he's going to be and you got to know you made it through because God was carrying you while you were trying to figure it out. He was working it out. It comes. Downs, ends, and outs. It comes with the territory. God bless you. It was on that night that our master, as he conversated with his disciples, and share with them for the third time his departure. And he explained to them that if I don't go, the comforter will not come. But I want to leave an ordinance with you that as often as you do it, you do show forth my death and suffering until I shall come again. And as I said, on that night he lifted up 
the bread and gave thanks over it. He said, this is symbolic supplication of my body, which will be broken for you at Calvary. And as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In like manner, he took the cup, lifted it up, gave thanks over it, and said, this is my blood which shall be shed for you at Golgotha's hill. And I will not drink it with you until I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom. And as often as you eat of the bread, drink of the wine, you do show forth my death and suffering until I come again. Let us drink together. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God bless you. gospel that you would receive the word today I pray everything that has gone on that cause you to reflect and give God the thanks that he so richly deserved and to know that every test every trial every situation every pain problem and persecution it's a part of the process it comes with the territory and guess what God is delivering you I want to say that to you again. God is delivering you. He is delivering you out of every debacle moment that you are facing and that you will face in your future. God has already provided a means of escape and it comes with the territory. Just know that ups and downs go together in order to get you through the situation. And I am so glad I made it. Tell somebody, I'm so glad I made it. Yes, I am. So glad I made it I made it through Yes I did I made it through Yeah I'm so glad I made it 
hadn't been for God, I wouldn't have made it. So I'm glad I made it, yes sir. I made it through, yes I did. I made it through, yes I did. One more time, so glad I made it. So glad I made it. I made it through. I made it through. Yeah. So glad I made it. So glad I made it. Yes, I did. I made it through. I'm going to just do it this way. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. And be both glory and power. Let me add dominion to that. Go in peace, my brother. Go in peace, my sister. And just know that your current condition is not your conclusion. You will make it to the other side of through. So glad I made it. God bless you. So glad I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it through. Yes, I did. I made it through, hey, so glad I made it, so glad I made it, I made it through, I made it through, yes I did, God bless you.